What's up, dudes and dudettes? I'm Kosol, your local dungeon master. Not to be confused with Dungeon Daddy, unless... Being the DM for your campaign can be one of the most fulfilling roles in tabletop games. Or at least, that's what you tell yourself before you break open a bottle of Jameson the night before a session and wonder why you didn't just play Baldur's Gate 3 instead. I'm also God's favorite princess and the most interesting girl in the world. God, I'd do anything for you, Shadowheart. Unfortunately, one of the biggest blockades to dungeon mastering is gonna be your players. Doubly so if the only people you can find to play are the freaks on Discord. So brother, listen up, because here's some of the most common types of players you're gonna run into and how to deal with them in your campaign. You don't know what is going on. We are making money, you are sleeping, you know? This kind of player is always looking for ways to optimize their character to steamroll all of your encounters. Now, there's nothing inherently wrong with this kind of person. In fact, I like to use them as a Wikipedia page. Sometimes, I even try to start a rules argument with them so that I can buy time when I'm trying to make things up. But you're soon gonna realize they're the one person that's gonna keep your party from team killing itself. Why? Because nobody else will learn their class. Why aren't more people intelligent? Like me. A power gamer will seem like a pain in the ass, but they'll actually be a blessing in disguise. Every other player will be looking up shitty YouTube class guides while this person knows exactly what they want to do on every round. However, you gotta be very careful, because some other players might start thinking they chose a dog shit class, when in reality, they're just illiterate. So how do you balance out these players? Obviously, there's the whole balancing fights accordingly and whatnot, but that's boring. You gotta create encounters that can fit different people's play styles. Not everything has to be fighting. Maybe you get in a debate, and now the charismatic player gets to have the spotlight. Maybe you're on a chase, and rangers are actually useful for once. Maybe if she didn't leave, I'd still be happy. Oh, uh, uh, I forgot you're here. With the rise of TikTok and Twitter, oh, my bad, X videos, sorry, there's a certain phenomenon that's occurred where an incredibly large amount of people now believe that they are funnier than they actually are. Um, uh, I, I can't take this picture seriously. Um, yeah, I, I, I guess that's better. This tends to lead to players creating meme characters, which may be funny in the moment, but you also gotta listen to your friend's awful character ideas for however long they're alive. Becoming stale is the mortal enemy of the memer. I have a theory that memers are scared of roleplay and emotional connection, hence why they try to fight off awkwardness with comedy. Let me introduce you to Operation Honeypot. Listen up, soldier. You have to lure them into being interested in your story by disguising it as something else. They see an event and think, Wow, this is gonna be so funny. My friends will appreciate my character's interactions with this event. When in reality, you're slowly setting up serious storylines involving their backstory. Because the memer doesn't think of anything past the one sentence they sent you during your session zero. It's fine to have a funny character, but we require substance here. Remember, the memer is easily manipulated. You don't even have to railroad them. Just set out the bait and let the rats come out the feed. This player basically can't go the entire session without hitting a little bit of the doobie. And to be honest with you, there isn't much you can do about it. Because if they can't go three hours without smoking, they're probably more knowing sober. You're just gonna have to deal with them not paying attention sometimes, or forgetting things. That's just a wacky tabacky life for you. Now, not every stoner is like that, but it happens to enough people that we might as well cover it. Think of the stoner as a dog. You put a pile of meat in front of them, they can't control themselves. You gotta pace them with a few treats here and there. Assuming that they are actually affecting the enjoyment of the campaign and other players, you gotta assert your dominance as the dog's owner. Put your foot down and tell them not to smoke as much. And if they can't do that, then maybe it's time to take old Smokey to the back of the shed. What the fuck is this piece of shit? These kinds of players are probably one of the more difficult ones to deal with as a DM. They make it their goal to cause as much chaos as they can in your homebrewed story, all because their little alignment tells them they can. Well, you're the DM, and you're not gonna get out chaos by a little piss baby, are you? Now anybody can kill a player. That's easy. All you need is a 50-gallon drum, 500 jugs of bleach, four magnum con. The key to dealing with these players is consequences. The chaotic dumbass is like a rich frat guy that never got beat as a kid. Everything was made for them, so they go about the campaign with no care for themselves or the rest of the party. But Hermano, you're the DM. You're the hit of fentanyl lace coke that's about to ruin an entire family line. NPCs aren't just gonna be stepped on. You gotta craft. Punch 
punishments that hurt them, but not too much that they think you're targeting them, which you totally are. But if you don't say anything, who knows? And honestly, I find their wacky antics make the campaign more entertaining for me as the DM. If you really want to make it spicy, have their decisions affect the rest of the party too. Then you might actually have people trying to keep them from doing stupid things. Uh, just note this might lead to real life altercations, in which case I take no responsibility for my advice. By the time you come back, I'll have already rebranded to an ASMR channel. The main character. I hate this kind of person so much. Every time I look at them, I feel the need to gouge out my own eyeballs. If I had to choose between saving them or a pack of orphans in a burning building, I would choose neither because the children have already been tainted by a sickening aura. I'm not a religious man, but I pray to God every night that they burn in the darkest pits of hell. I'm gonna find your family, I'm gonna fuck. The main character is one of the lamest types of players to have. These are people that peaked in kindergarten and now their only social interactions is role-playing fantasy characters. Because of this, they go overboard and try to take control of every little bit of the party's decisions. Or they try to steal every little piece of loot like the little goblin they are. They've watched too much anime and want to be the protagonist. You gotta be very careful because if you're not watching, your players might become part of his sick harem. But Papa DM believes in redemption, even for the most sickening of players. Assuming that the main character has any idea of social cues, you gotta corral them like a wild pig. Take them down a notch. You gotta belittle them, break them mentally. You take away a king's crown and he's just a man like the rest of us. Take this time to focus on your other players and turn the main character into the supporting cast. When it's their time, sure, go ahead. Do your little weeby bullshit. But you gotta wait your turn, little boy, because all great things come with patience. So yeah, these are just a few kinds of people you might run into as players. Alternatively, if you follow this guide I found on Reddit, you could basically negate every single solution I just gave you. But also, most of you watching probably have some interest in tabletop games, which makes it likely that you might be sociably inept and find it hard to talk to people. I mean, I, I don't find it weird or anything. Um, I, I think I heard some other people saying stuff. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Not me. Not me. Uh, um, but yeah, I think uh, the whole social and that thing, I think that's something you gotta work on yourself, maybe. Um, why, why are you staring at me like that? Uh, you see, see, usually this is the part where I'd say something like a conclusion about friendship or something, but I think, uh, I think I'm just gonna go. Yeah, um, uh, yeah, I, I got a thing, um, later.